Our next story is from Sri Lanka. The country has been hit by a cyclone. It's called Ditwa. At least 250 people have been confirmed dead and dozens remain missing after days of cyclone-fueled torrential rain. How come cyclone Ditwa has created devastation in Sri Lanka and is on its way towards India? How it has been named? What is the preparedness for tackling it? And what are the consequences that we should be ready for? Sri Lanka is drowning under unprecedented rains. Hundreds are dead, dozens are missing. And after this devastation by cyclone Ditwa, it is turning towards India. Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to understand about Cyclone Ditwa, how it is named, what is this process of formation of cyclone and how it has been occurring frequently in Bay of Bengal. So let us start with understanding that what is the situation at hand when we are talking about Cyclone Ditwa. So Initially, Cyclone Ditwa originated in the Bay of Bengal as a severe depression. Gradually, it turned into a severe tropical cyclone and you can see the trail as of now. So, if you look at the day, 29, it is actually crossing in here. It has already encircled Sri Lanka and it is expected by November 30 that it will make a landfall in Tamil Nadu. IMD that is Indian Meteorological Department has already issued orange alert for the states of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh and also the Union Territory of Puducherry. Now I will leave you here with a question. What do you mean by orange alert? IMD classifies the alerts into multiple categories. How many categories are there? Orange alert is the second most severe category which has been put forth in the given states and union territories. Now, when we are talking about what we are expecting, we also need to know that already Cyclone Ditwa has created a humanitarian crisis in terms of the devastation that has taken place in our neighbor island country that is Sri Lanka. As I mentioned, 100 people are dead, dozens are missing and 20 districts out of the 25, they have been severely affected across Sri Lanka. So, as of now, 60,000 families and 2 lakh people are directly in impacted and there is a red alert across the island if we talk about which has been issued by authority. So it has seen torrential rains which has led to floods and power outages as well as transport disruption. And when we talk about its landfall in India, IMD has already forecasted and that is why we have an orange alert in the region that the cyclone is moving north and northwest towards the Tamil Nadu coast. So it is expected by tomorrow that it will make a landfall and that is why from the last two years we have seen heavy rainfall in the region of Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Rail Seema as well as Kerala. and. By tomorrow, Chennai would be expecting very heavy rainfall. That is why Chennai is also under alert. Furthermore, wind speed expectations are above and beyond 80 and there have been advisories which have been issued so that fishermen do not venture out in the sea during this particular expected landfall and the weather phenomena which will be seen around. Now, let us get into the conversation, into understanding that how cyclones are named and how did we come with the word, how did we name this cyclone as Ditwa. So, if you talk about the word Ditwa itself, it means a lagoon. Now, this word was given by Yemen and it refers to a specific lagoon that is Ditwa, which is located in Sokotra Islands and they are famous for the unique coastal system. But the question is, why did Yemen get to label this particular cyclone? This happened because this is a proper naming framework which exists and it is decided by World Meteorological Organization and UN SCAP panel, especially on tropical cyclones. Now, this panel has 13 countries which basically contribute to the naming and after that, these names are used in a particular sequence. The names have a specific criteria on based on the criteria the countries can suggest the name they should be short they should be easy to pronounce and they should be usually culturally neutral that means they shouldn't be culturally associated for the given country so in this situation the name that we have picked up as for the sequence 
is Ditwa and this name was suggested by Yemen. Now when we are naming the cyclone, another thing that is kept in mind that names are not reused if the cyclone was highly destructive, otherwise reusing of names is also possible. So in this scenario, we have understood how the Ditwak came into the scenario. Now also let us move and understand what is the basic process of formation of a cyclone, why the frequency has increased in Bay of Bengal, what are the conditions that Bay of Bengal offers that we see more frequency of cyclones in Bay of Bengal as compared to Arabian Sea. So let us try to decipher all of this, starting with the very basic process that how cyclones are formed. So when we are talking about formation of cyclones, cyclones are formed over the region where the sea surface temperature is above 26 degrees Celsius and this heat is responsible for making the moist air gradually rise. Now when we see the rise of this moist air, what happens? A low pressure is created. What happens here is that a low pressure area is created. Now when the low pressure area is created, we know that the movement of air is always from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. So this column of low pressure, we get to see winds from high pressure come in here to fill up this place and because of the Coriolis force that our earth is going around and the spin is created, this winds start moving in a given column. Now the pressure we remember that here we had the pressure, so winds are coming in, as soon as they rise condensation takes place, condensation takes place then the latent heat of condensation is present and this latent heat further fuels this whole system. Earth's rotation which is responsible for Coriolis force helps in the spinning of the system which gradually intensifies and creates a eye here. Now when we are talking about the eye, it is basically the central column and the pressure as it keeps weakening, more high pressure, uh, more wind from high pressure region comes in and keeps intensifying this and this is how basically a cyclone is formed. So if I have to put it in one single diagram, you can see that strong surface wind because of the temperature, moist air rises and warm moist air keeps drawing into the center. As it goes up, we see condensation. That is why we see formation of cyroscopy, cumulonimbus clouds. And this is where we get to wind, see the wind out spiraling. The ocean temperature here for the moist air has to be somewhere above 26 degrees Celsius and if it keeps on fueling, what will happen? It will keep on spinning and until and unless the source is cut off, the main source, it will keep on intensifying. So that is why whenever a cyclone hits the coast, the source of this cyclone is cut off and that's why all of this system gradually dissipates. Now when we are talking about cyclone, now let us relate it to the situation that we got to see in Bay of Bengal. So when we are talking about conditions which enable the formation of cyclone, all of them were found in Bay of Bengal. High humidity in lower atmosphere, low vertical wind shear, there was strong monsoon trough also present and high ocean heat content was also seen. So we get to see this was formed over very warm Bay of Bengal and all the conditions which were involved in the formation of cyclone were present. But at the same time, few things that you need to know that cyclone Ditwa intensified at a very fast pace and that was because of two particular drivers here. The first one being the climate induced, the climate change induced warming, the excessive warning that we have seen. Because if you talk about Bay of Bengal region, it is warming at 3x rate. And second, at that very point of time, the wind patterns were very favorable as well as the heat energy. Because if you talk about the cyclone, the vertical wind shear is also very important so that this system gets to develop. If the vertical wind shear is present, the formation of cyclone becomes very, very tough. Now that we have cyclone on our land coast in Tamil Nadu, what are the impact that we are expecting? We are expecting that there will be likely flooding in the urban areas of Chennai, Puducherry, Kadalore, as well as Nagapattinam. Coastal roads might seem blockages and storm surge can also be seen wherever the water level of ocean can be seen high. 
Furthermore, inland impacts are also suspected because it will be not just be the coast that is going to see the harm. Areas such as Rayal Seema and Kerala, they are already expecting heavy rains. Now, because of all this, there is a huge impact on agriculture expected. For example, crops of paddy, banana, sugarcane, groundnut plantations, all of them are risk in Tamil Nadu as well as Andhra Pradesh. And infrastructure risks such as power lines, drainage systems, ports, metro operations, all of these are also standing at risk. How it will unfold, it is yet to be seen. But at the same time, the big question lies is, are we prepared? So as of now, our Indian Meteorological Department has already issued orange alert and they are continuously using Doppler radars as well as satellite models so that the cyclone can be precisely tracked. At the same time, the National Disaster Relief Force is already pre-positioned in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. Apart from that, state governments have already activated all sorts of control rooms and evacuation rooms if needed in the state of emergency. Coastal police has raised awareness and also alerted the fishermen. Relief shelters have been put in place, medical units are on standby and India has already de dispatched HADR support for Sri Lanka under Operation Sagar Bandhu. So this becomes another important factor when we are talking about preparedness and when we are talking about diplomacy, relief diplomacy, Operation Sagar Bandhu can come out as a case study here as well. Now on this note, I will be leaving you with a practice question here. The practice question, you can put the answers in the comment section. That was all from my side. Thank you so much.